Hi everyone, this is the fourth chapter in the COVID-19 desktop widget development tutorial series. So far we have implemented up to this. We have this nice widget. The GUI handling is done. In this chapter what will we do is to uh, write a configuration file. Currently the refresh interval for the data and the country that we have chosen is all hard coded directly into the program. So it is not editable for a normal user. So in this chapter we will provide a configuration file in the form of JSON. Uh, similar, let me show you an example. So it will look like this settings.json and there we will store the refresh interval, country name and country code. So when the program starts rather than having hard coded values it will read the values from this file and process it. So let's start working on it. So the first thing that we have to do is to create another package since it is a separate module and I am going to name it as config. Inside config I need two classes. First class will be the model class. It is a JSON POJO uh, converter class. It is similar to the one that we have created here. For the country data what this class is used is when the JSON comes we are using this class to convert the JSON into Java POJO. Uh, similar idea we need a configuration class uh, that acts as a POJO so here I am going to name it as configuration model and here I, am, I need three values one is for the refresh interval so I am going to name it as refresh interval in seconds then we need a country name so uh, that field will be here this country name will be used to send query to the API and one string for country code so this country code is not used in anywhere except for displaying it below the globe icon here i have shown it as in that will that means it is india similar similarly you can give your own country code there and here what i have to do is to uh, put some get transactor so i'm going to do that and after that I need a constructor with some default values so let me tell you why it is important when you start the program for the first time there won't be any file so we need to handle the situation where there is no file uh, and we have to use a default configuration for that I am going to give some default value here I am going to uh, sorry uh, here here I am going to set the time to 30 seconds so it can be a uh, refresh interval seconds i am going to increase it and set it to five minutes then we need to set the country name so country name by default i am going to set it as india then country code i am going to set it as in so we we have this configuration model with the default value so when the program start these uh, default values will be used and I am going to I am going to create a service class here and that service class will be used for getting this data from other places of the program so I am going to name it as configuration service and here let me create a constant value here first of all I need a file to store this information right I, I, I have to store it in some way I have to store it somewhere so for that I am going to give the file name as settings file i need that file and let me name the file so the name of the file will be settings.json then i need a json library for doing the conversion between json string and java pojo for that i am going to make use of json so new json builder dot create all right now we have to write our function so the first one will be getting the configuration model so config model get configuration so we will be calling this function from other parts of the program to get the configuration values and the first thing we have to check whether is the settings file exists because when the program starts for the very first time this file won't be there so we will have to create the file manually so for that I am going to create another function create settings file. So this function will be executed when the program starts for the first time. Okay. So I am going to create a configuration model. So config model, config model, new config model. When I create it, it will have these default values with a refresh interval 300 seconds, country name India and country code IN. 
so i will write that value directly to the file so try writer writer equals new file writer i am going to use a file writer class with the settings file and we don't want to append any data and what we can do is we can make use of json to json function to write this object into a file as a json so i'm going to give it as config model writer that's all it is very easy to do people used to complain that java usually takes a long to accomplish tasks but just look at this code with just what is it three lines of code we are able to create a configuration and write it into a file so java has evolved a lot then obviously that throws an exception because it is related to file so i'm going to throw i think it will be io exception no need to throw big exceptions okay so uh, we have handled the uh, initial starting case now what we have to do is if the file was uh, existing or we have to handle this in both cases now what we have to do is general to all the cases like if if the file does not exist it is already created if it was already there we simply have to read the configuration from the file so what we need is very similar to this instead of read write operation we need to make use of a reader so reader reader equals new file reader similar to what i said about writing reading a file is also very fast so we, we simply read the file using a file reader then using the json we can use the from json function and we can give the reader here and give the class that we want to uh, make the json converted to for example in our case it is config model so config model dot class so uh, one more issue here is like these two functions have the same name so instead of create setting file we need to change it to get configuration from file and of course it has to return the config model so config model then we can make it return the config model so return json from json so what it will do is it will read the content from the settings file and convert it into config model class and return it so here i can now simply write get configuration from file so we have handled all the cases here actually for example if it is a first time starting there won't be any file then we will create a file and return the uh, value after reading from it if it already exists we simply read from it and return it so that's about the configuration now what we have to do is to change our uh, widget controller to use values from this configuration service rather than using hard coded values so in order to do that let's go to widget controller and here we need to create a configuration class object so uh, config model config model and when the program starts we will get the instance from there so configuration service dot new dot get configuration so we will get the configuration like this so here it throws some exceptions so we have to handle that so it will be like this configuration model and uh, and here we have to change it in two places one is here the period at which the refresh automatically happens so instead of the 20 seconds that was hard coded we can make use of config model get a refresh interval in seconds so that is done and the second place is here i was giving india as a hard coded value so i have to change it to get country name and there is one more thing that i have to change this one this in uh, uh that is controlled by the text country code is currently not changed it is fixed if i search for that uh it is not set from anywhere we are just using that for getting seed not for setting anything so we have to do that in order to do that we can make use of the same configuration model object so what i'm going to do is uh, this is init scheduler function so it doesn't make sense to load the configuration in that function okay uh, okay here here what I'm going to do is I'm going to init the scheduler then after that I'm going to text country code dot set text from config model dot get country code so it will get the country code from the file and from the file and set it to the text country code text 
component in JavaFX. Now let us run the program and see how it is working. Okay, uh, COVID-19 information, it is fetching cases, it is using India. Uh, now if I go to the my project root folder by clicking right clicking and going to show in explorer section here we should see a file there as you can see there is a file now called settings.json I'm going to change that I'm going to change India to Canada and here the country code I am going to set it to CN I am going to close that I am going to restart the program And you can see that the cases have been changed and the information is for Canada country. So that's it guys, that's about the configuration handling. We brought the configuration to a settings file, a JSON file, and we are controlling the program uh, hardcoded values with the, now with those values in the file. Now one more thing that I have to do is currently there is no option to exit this program if I because I can't see the program in taskbar I can't see my program in my uh, this section uh, I can't simply exit the program in order to exit the program we have to add a context menu so let us work on the context menu here so for that let me write a new function let's name the function as uh, initialize context menu so initialize context menu and here first we need a menu item so menu I, uh, you have to make sure that you are not importing java.aw.menu item instead you have to import the java fx menu item so menu item exit item equals new menu item and here i'm going to give the text as exit okay now we have a exit menu item what we have to do is to attach that menu item to a context menu so let me write a context menu so context menu context menu equals new context menu and the context menu can accept arguments as menu items so i'm going to give the exit item there then the next thing obviously uh, i have to do is to add a even handler what happens when the user press on the exit item so exit item dot <clears throat> set on action and when he click on that uh, click on that or when he select that menu item we have to exit the program so in order to exit the program we can make use of system dot exit call and it will exit it now what we have to do finally is to show the context menu when some event happens so when the user right click on the anywhere on this widget we have to show the context menu so uh, so the root pane will be a correct candidate here because the root pane means the entire widget so let us add that root pane dot add even handler we can add an even handler and here i am going to add a mouse event so it is going to be mouse event dot mouse pressed so if any key in the mouse is pressed this method this event handler will be called so i'm going to handle that here i have to make sure that the event that is causing the uh, context menu to appear is by right click of the mouse so that can be checked using event dot is secondary mouse button so if it is secondary mouse button that is being clicked then we have to show the context menu so context menu dot show and we have to specify on which container we want to show it so that is going to be root pane and regarding the mouse position we can simply give event dot get screen x and event dot get screen y so it will uh, show now i have to call this function when the program starts so this initialize will be called and below here i have to call initialize context menu now let me run the program and see how it is working so uh, the widget is coming and if i right click i can see the exit button and if i press on that exit button the program is getting closed there are some issues right now with this uh, for example if i right click on this one exit will appear but if i click on somewhere else within the widget itself it is not going away so we need to add an else condition here that is if the user is pressing any button of mouse that is not a secondary mouse button then we have to hide it so we can call context menu dot hide so if it is not a secondary button 
uh, then it will it should hide so I have to add a check whether it is showing if it is showing and the user has pressed some button that is not mouse secondary button then the context menu should be hidden okay uh, exit is showing I'm going to click on here and it is going so so that's about the basic working of the context menu I need to do some styling because the font size the color everything is bad right now so I'm going to load the CSS file main style or CSS and add some entries here so first of all we need to style the context menu so it is going to be dot context menu and here I have to tell that the text color should be the text color should be white then font size should be or we can give maybe 12 pt i think 12 pt should be fine then we have to set a background color so fx background color and here what i am going to do is to derive a color from this one so i'm going to derive a lighter color of the fx base uh, in my tutorial previously i have used this many times so this is for deriving a color from a given color so from the xx base i am going to derive a 40 percentage lighter color and that will be the background color for the context menu now i need to add one more css style that is for the menu item uh, to handle the focusing so when it is focused i have to change the background color so fx background color to let's say yellow yellow okay now let me run the program uh, as you can see uh, the font size has been increased and the yellow color is coming but the yellow is not matching the let me use a slightly darker yellow i think hash b b6 I think that will be better and it is much more darker it is still not matching but I think that should do the trick okay so that's about the exit button we need one more context menu button that is to refresh at the uh, refresh manually for example when the user clicks on that uh, context menu the data should be immediately refreshed rather than waiting for the scheduler to do it for us so in order to do that <clears throat> what we have to do is to create another menu item so that is going to be refresh item and the text is going to be refresh now we have to add this to the context menu so exit item and refresh item and we have to add a event handler here of course so set on action and when the user clicks on that we have to make use of the executor service to schedule it the reason why i am not calling that function i, I mean i could have just called this low data function but the problem is this is called a blocking call so it this can take a long time if the network is slow in that case the gui will get stuck so it is imperative that we make use of a thread to do a network operation so i am making use of this dot load data and here i am going to give the delay as zero and time unit as seconds so what will happen here is this function will be immediately called using a thread given to the executor service okay now let me run the program and uh, the, we have refresh now and exit option if I click on refresh now it will refresh in the back end uh, if you don't trust me I can add a s out here here s out uh, I mean system dot out log and refreshing data as a message so when I click on the refresh button it should display refreshing data so it show it showed a refreshing data for one time that is executed when the program started now if i click on refresh now you can see that there is uh that message again refreshing data which which was invoked after pressing pressing on the menu item so that's it guys that's the end of this chapter we have handled the configuration uh using a json file also we have added the option to exit the widget using context menu so i will see you on the next one take care